Southwest Flight 4101, sir, it's on down to San Juan. Can you push it back to your side? El San Juan Hotel in Puerto Rico and it's stunning. I absolutely love it. Um, as soon as you walk in, you have a bar to your right with a mini fridge along with two individual closets. Now that mini fridge you'll probably be using as we ended up finding out pretty quickly that drinks are quite expensive. And there is a CVS right down the street, just a short walk to be able to buy your own drinks and mix them and bring them to the beach yourself. So a nice great bathroom there as you see with a sliding door and it has a full size mirror. Now we did upgrade our room to a partial ocean view. So it did give us a little extra square footage here in our room with a king size bed, a desk, a luggage case holder there, nice flat screen TV and this nice lounge chair over here right next to the window, which was amazing because you get this stunning, stunning view of the ocean. This is not partial view, guys. This is full ocean view. And for partial upgrade, I mean, this is absolutely amazing. We were in love with this room and the view, I couldn't get over it. It was stunning. Now let's go check out the rest of the resort.
For any of my fellow gym junkies like myself and my boyfriend Donnie, we do like to occasionally work out while we're on vacation. And the Fairmont El San Juan has a really great facility. On this floor here, we're on the second floor in the cardio room. And as you can see, every other machine is um, closed off. So you're not close to anyone else working out. On the first floor, it's a weightlifting room. And then on this third floor, you're going to see here is the TRX, which has kettlebells and punching bags. Whatever you might wanna do upstairs, you can do it all outdoors, which is absolutely beautiful. Why not? Here we go, Bio Bay Tours. Bioluminescent. You'll see some sparkling water. are here at Bajardo and you'll see right behind me there's some kayaks and this is really popular for the bioluminescent tour um, and that is in simple terms at night the water glows it's like sparkles in the water as soon as you either put your paddle in or you touch the water you will see um, purples and blues um, come to life in the water which i'm super excited for and one of the reasons why i really wanted to do this tour here in fajardo in puerto rico so i'm super excited i don't know about this guy i think he's I'm excited, excited. <laughs> <laughs> um and as you can see i'm in my mask we are sitting here um here at the port um it's puerto rico is really strict on masks um, but we are sitting by ourselves so that's why donnie doesn't have his mask on right now um but we are waiting for our tour which we will be leaving what, I think we're supposed to gather up at 5.30 and then we'll be taking off at 5.45. And from there, it's about a two hour tour um, into uh, the water on our kayaks, as you see right behind us here. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. So I'm super excited about this. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around so you guys can take a look at all these other companies. There's so many different kayak companies that you can um, make reservations for. The place we decided to reserve with was Puerto Rico Bio Bay Tours. We'll let you know how that is. Um, and they are right behind us, actually. They're a little bit further up, but they're right there. But let me turn the camera around just a little bit here so you can see. There are all the other kayaking tours available as well. It is COVID, so of course, they are limited capacity from what we know of at this point. Um, but there's quite a bit of people here, so we'll, we'll find out. We'll, we'll see what happens, but we'll catch on the flip side. So unfortunately, we didn't get to bring our phones as it was highly recommended not to do so. The reason for that is because your phone can't actually capture the bioluminescence like you might have seen around the internet as marketing companies really enhance their photos as we've learned that they are totally photoshopped, which I do have to say, I'm so happy I didn't bring it because you really were able to enjoy the entire kayaking experience. It was really, really cool just to see the actual purples and blues coming out of the water. Absolutely incredible. So if you're in Fajardo, make sure to sign up with Puerto Rico Bio Bay Tours. As these guys really know what they're talking about, they give you the full scoop 101 on how to kayak and everything in between. So definitely a must book with Puerto Rico Bio Bay Tours. Panaderia, España, uh, which was highly recommended to us 
Uh, they got a lot of great options, some bread, some pan dulce, some breakfast, some cafe con leche, um, pretty much everything. And it was, as soon as we got there, we probably got there around um, just about 10 a.m. and it was packed. Um, parking is pretty tight, but there's some pretty good street parking uh, down the way. Uh, but once you walk in, you have the option of either ordering some pan dulce, some breads, or if you want some uh, breakfast, you can get in that line, which was the busiest line that we got in. So uh, Donnie ended up ordering some breakfast there. He thought it was okay. He had the breakfast of the um, revuelta, eggs with jamón. Scrambled eggs ham. Scrambled eggs ham and the cafe con leche and it wasn't good so as you can hear he's not very happy right now he could go, totally go for something different but what i went with was the pan dulce that's what we heard was good um and i i had to try it one of the ones i did get was a i'm gonna show you here hopefully you can see this but let me get a better view just so you can see so I got a pastelito de queso, and then this is just a pan dulce with some custard inside. And we're gonna give this a try, and see how this, uh, see what this tastes like. So I'm excited, I'm most excited about this pastelito de queso just because uh, I grew up eating this. My grandma used to make this and it was so good. Um, we come from a Nicaraguan background and it was the best. I loved it when she made it. So I'm hoping, I'm not gonna have too much of high hopes here just because my grandma's was the best, of course. But let's give it a shot, see what this tastes like. Well, it's, it is like wet. It's almost like a flan actually. Ooh, it's dripping. I need some napkins. Can you give me some napkins? Thank you, thank you. All right, let's see. So you can take a look at that. It is like really moist. It's got some like syrup. It's almost like flan, actually. So let's see. Oh, that is good. That is really good. You get some cinnamon. It is got the flan texture to it. Um, what else is that in there? Let me see. It is really good. It's like cream cheesy. Wow. That is really good. It's definitely not like what I grew up eating, the pastelito de queso. But this is so, so good. Oh my gosh. Okay, now we gotta try the other one, but I might go back to that one <laughs> after this. Okay, so this one's got powdered sugar. It's just a pan dulce with some custard in it. it looks really good. Let's see. Mmm. Mm. That's really good too. That's actually, it reminds me of the Italian pastries um, back in San Francisco. Uh, just again just nice and, and flaky um, of course the bread is a little dry but you get that sweetness from the custard which is absolutely amazing and that powdered sugar gives it the perfect balance so I give these two desserts two thumbs up my favorite of the two is gonna be that pastelito de queso that is amazing I'm gonna totally devour that right now but if you're here in Puerto Rico San Juan uh, make sure to come to Empanada, or excuse me, Panaderia España and check it out, especially for the pan dulce. I think that's one of the go-tos to definitely try. If you want to try the breakfast, go for it, but as, as Donnie <laughs> mentioned a little earlier, it was okay. So <laughs> definitely hit him a shot and we'll catch you here on the flip side. <laughs> one thing I did forget to mention is the um, Panaderia España, they are really strict out here with the masks and the social distancing. So keep that in mind. We are visiting here um, in the month of May. Um, today is May 6th. 
of 2021 so definitely um keep that in mind if you are traveling to puerto rico they are very strict right now with all the social distancing a lot of people were getting a little bit too close and an employee came by and he spaced everybody out to be on each of their own markers um, to be six feet apart. So I thought that was really great. I love that to me personally. I, I, I like trying to feel, if I can feel safe somewhere, even better. Um, and that made me feel a lot better seeing the employees really enforcing that. So um, definitely make sure to um, be respectful and keep your distance from others. Uh, whether you are in a small place or if you're out and about in Puerto Rico because they're they are having a, a bit of an outbreak here of COVID right now. I feel safe though to be honest with you. I was really scared about coming out here uh, during this uh, COVID time, but They're really enforcing it. So and they do have curfew right now at 10 p.m. Um, every night uh, this week um, really making sure that employees are at least or at least restaurants are closing at, at least by 9 8 30 ish um, That way employees have time to get home by 10 or before 10 which is Pretty crazy, but um, overall Just keep that in mind make sure to bring your mask make sure to keep that social distancing Otherwise, they will be telling you something So we are here at Luquillo Beach here in Puerto Rico and we did have to, um, we rented a car today and we did have to pay for parking which was $4 which isn't bad, right? So, um, pretty big parking lot as you can see right behind me. And we're walking up to the beach right now which I'll turn the camera around so you can take a look. I'm really excited about this because I have heard that this is one of the better beaches here on the island. And we're gonna go check it out so make sure to follow along and uh, we'll see you here in just a few so if you didn't get the memo to bring your own lounge chair don't worry because you can rent chairs and umbrellas there at Lukio Beach. As soon as you walk up, you'll find this stand and as you can see here, the gentleman is setting up our chairs along with the umbrella. Each chair is $6 and if you want an umbrella, it's $11. So for us, our total here was $23. And it's good till 5 p.m. Fish, they had beef, they had chicken, so 
this was our first try. We'll probably get some other ones and give it a shot, but definitely at least a try, whichever route you go, whether it is from seafood or whether it is the chicken. So, cheers. here in Los Pios, here in Lupio Beach, and decided to try the empanada of shrimp. And this here is a fried plantain. There's nothing in it, they said, um, but it looks like it's like it's got some batter on it, and it looks really good. I love my noodles, um, the sweet plantain, and those flamets, which are really good. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Might as well, we're here, so. I'm gonna go ahead and dig in first on the shrimp one. I'm gonna take a bite in the middle here and see how this tastes. Mm. This is way better than the langosta that we just had a little bit ago. The flavors are on point. It's not too fishy. It's not too salty. It's got a perfect, perfect marinade on it. It is really good. I actually really like that. And it looks like, I don't know if you can see, it's got little shrimps in there for this in banana. That's really good. Yeah. Take a look at that. It's really good. So that's, that's really good. I like that one. Okay, let's try this. Not done. Oh, it's hot. I don't know if you can see that too. This is like, it's, it's definitely a platano inside a batter. So this is like carb overload and grease overload. So let's, let's see what this is like. Mm, Let's 
Yeah, so this is a uh, stronger smell. Yes, like more fragrance. Yeah, fragrance. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and the reason for that is that as rum ages, it develops more layers of flavor, more layers of aroma. Right? And it was amazing. Honestly, for an hour tour, you don't get all that gibberish. Um, it's straight to the point. Walk through the factory, walk through the distillery, look at all the barrels and all of that and the, the history and um, seeing how they bottle everything. And then from there, you do the rum tasting, which was absolutely amazing. I am not a rum drinker. I had quite a few drinks already, so I feel a little toasty. But uh, it was absolutely amazing, honestly. It was really awesome to try. They had four different rums to try. One uh, from number one was the youngest rum, and then to number four was the oldest rum, which was anywhere between 15 to 35 years old, which was absolutely amazing. My favorite had to be number three. It was the smoothest. It was a four-star rum here at Ron de Barrielito and it was absolutely amazing. I drank all of it. So for not being a rum drinker, definitely two thumbs up here. After you do the rum tour, you do get a free drink. They give you a little token. Um, as you might recall a little earlier in the video, you get, get that token, take it over to the bar and order your free drink. Anything that has to do with their rum, you can mi a mixed drink, whether it's a sangria, whether it's a pina colada, whatever it, uh, you would like of your choice, you can order that here. And then of course you can sit here. There are some umbrellas here to the side. As you can see, there's some tables there you can, you can hang out. We heard that you can do some Uber Eats, some come here just to hang out, have some food, have some drinks. It's a really great ambiance. It's amazing. And then they have a little shop there to order or buy. I ended up buying myself a little shirt, uh, which was really, it's amazing quality. We love those really soft tees at least fall asleep in and, and um, this was one of those really soft teas so it definitely had to bring one home with me but if you're in San Juan, Puerto Rico definitely come by Ron de Barrio. It is absolutely amazing. Even if you're not a rum drinker I highly recommend it. I'm not one again and it was amazing. So definitely check it out. We'll catch you here on the flip side. Raices. Put your name down. We did have to wait an hour. 
to get our reservation in, but make sure you come here to ride with this. This is to die for. To get some legit mofongo, this is the place to be. Hands down. If I could give it more than two thumbs up, this is the place to be. This is live. It's a great ambiance, but not only that, you get some great food, great tasting food. So definitely come out here to ride with this in Old San Juan. All right, so we're back, and we are here at Castillo del Moro, which is in Old San Juan, uh, at the very end of Old San Juan, um, and it's beautiful. Uh, to come into the castle, you do pay an admission, but that admission goes towards any repairs and really maintaining the castle's integrity. Uh, the cost to get in for adult is $10 per person, um, so keep that in mind. They do only take a credit card, so don't bring any cash or not accepting it at all. They are also being really strict as well on the social distancing. They really are emphasizing on standing on the markers, making sure your mask is on. They even have, you'll see some in the video, but they'll have, they have some of the mannequins, not mannequins, some of the um, billboards with the, um, I don't know what you call it, but they have their, the faces with face masks on, which is really cute. I thought that was really cool. But uh, this place is absolutely amazing. There's so many nooks and crannies that there's so much to discover still. We're only halfway through the castle and it's absolutely amazing. We are in what seems to have been like a little dining room area for the soldiers to eat. Um, this castle is one of the oldest castles that live here in Puerto Rico and it was built here in 1527. I mean, that is insane and it is still standing in the Hurricane Maria and all of the families. Look at these steps. He's doing a dance. <laughs> so it's our last night here in Puerto Rico and we decided to come have dinner at Casita Miramar. We heard some really great reviews. It's got like four and a half stars. Um, and amazing pictures online, so we're super excited to have this tonight. So make sure to follow along and see what our view is, and we'll catch you all on the flip side. All right, so we are here at Casita Miramar, and I just got our food. We just got our food. Excuse me. I ended up ordering the sweet plantain with shredded meat. And I chose it with rice and beans. Donnie ended up getting the um, skirt stick, which is absolutely amazing. I've already tried 
he's taking a bite of it and obviously you can see he's already digging in he couldn't wait and it is actually really really good so i have high hopes for this uh sweet plantain that he's gonna be so we're gonna go ahead and give this a try i i cut off the tip already but i want a bite with this shredded beef along with the sweet plantain so let's give this a try Oh, this is gonna be huge already. I can see it. Okay, a little bit of everything. Look at that. So good. Cheers. I hope you guys enjoyed our Puerto Rico trip as much as we did. We had so much fun. Even though there was curfews and all kinds of stuff going on, especially during this crazy world we're living in right now, we still had a really great time. So I wanted to end the video with some closing comments for you. And especially for those of you who are considering or thinking about going to Puerto Rico or will be going to Puerto Rico in the near future, I wanted to give you guys some travel advice in hopes this will help you as much as I wish I would have had that myself when I was going um, on our trip here. So let's dive in. All right, so first thing, first things first, we traveled to Puerto Rico um, May 4th through May 10th. So before our arrival, we did uh, do some research. We Googled around to see what was required for travel guidelines to go to Puerto Rico. One of the things we ended up finding is we ran into this website called discoverpuertorico.com, which I'll make sure to add into the description box for you guys. And what it included was a lot of great tips besides just the travel guidelines of what you needed before arriving to Puerto Rico but things to do, the places to stay, all sorts of goodies there on the website. So definitely make sure to check out discoverpuertorico.com. So within that site, we did end up finding that um, the travel restrictions or guidelines as however you wanna put it, you are required to take a COVID test 72 hours prior to arrival. Once you complete that, you do have to complete a travel declaration form. So you can't submit that travel declaration form without your COVID test. So make sure to complete your COVID test prior to arriving. And it is a requirement that it has to be a COVID test that is done 72 hours prior to departure. So really make note of that. We ended up finding a site that did the mouth swab, got the test done, and within 24, 48 hours, we ended up getting the text messages and emails that our COVID results were in and we were negative, yay! So once we got those test results, we ended up uploading that into the travel declaration form. So not only do you need that test, but it will ask you your flight information, when you're arriving, when you're departing, all of that basic information, submit that. And that was it. We arrived to Puerto Rico May 4th 
Couple days later, we did end up running into or find or getting these messages um, from what was called a Sarah alert system or Sarah alert text messages. Um, and I'll show you a, a picture here. But what it is, is that they're automated messages that are, they're sending to you asking if you have any symptoms, if you're feeling uh, nausea, if you're feeling, um, you know, if you're vomiting, if you're having a runny nose and all kinds of other symptoms, you, you simply have to answer with a yes or no response. Luckily, we were able to answer all of those no because of negative COVID tests. Uh, so we don't know what happens if you end up answering yes, but we didn't even want to try, of course, right? So we were able to answer all of those no, and it's a daily text message system that you get. And that ran through, I believe, oh, five, uh, May 7th through May 18th. So quite a few days, and it's back to back again, every day that you're getting this text message. It just ended on May 18th for us, and, um, that's it. That's all you really have to do. So just be aware that you're getting this text message system. Just make sure that you're okay. All right. Now, traveling back into the States, you do not need a COVID test, uh, which was great. It actually gave me a little bit more of a sense of normalcy to not have to go do a test to come back to the mainland, come back to California and get a test done. We didn't have to do any of that. So that was really awesome to not have to worry about trying to find a site in Puerto Rico to get back into the mainland. So that was that was a, a nice little perk there. All right, next thing on the list is, how did I feel traveling during this pandemic, what we're living in right now? To be really honest with you, I was nervous to travel. I mean, it's been over a year that I've traveled and I was really unsure if I was even gonna end up going, to be honest with you. I'm glad we ended up going because we can't live in fear forever. Um, and that's what really struck me um, to go to Puerto Rico. Um, not only that, the executive order that they had in place, Puerto Rico is really taking it very seriously. And I don't blame them. They're a very small island, um, you know, and they, they're trying to keep all their residents safe. I love seeing it for myself that not only um, do did they have this executive order in of this crazy curfew at 10 p.m., but a lot of employers, employees, they were all enforcing it. You know, cops were even enforcing it. When we went down to, I believe it was called Las Placitas, uh, where all the bars and, and restaurants are, um, they were really enforcing it. If you didn't, if you were trying to walk out and your mask was down, they're telling you, hey, put it back up. You know, if you're not social distancing, if you're not standing six feet apart in line at a restaurant or uh, like, for example, Panaderia España, like I mentioned earlier in the video, they are telling you or employees are coming around making sure that you are standing on your markers to have that six feet apart. So. I honestly felt safe. I appreciated that from Puerto Rico. I'm so glad I traveled. And now I won't live in fear like I was before. You know, I can't live in fear forever. So that's my mentality and that's what I'm gonna stick with. I myself am taking my precautions, of course, making sure I still have all my life saw, antibacterial wipes and um, all of that hand sanitizer jazz. So all of that there was with me that made me feel even better. And of course, taking my daily vitamins, not gonna lie. I highly, highly, highly believe in the vitamins, especially the vitamin D. <laughs> Next thing on the list, booking tours. So booking tours um, wasn't very difficult at all to book, but we did run into, for example, trying to book a tour with Bacardi. We did not get that tour because they were already at capacity. And because, again, the crazy world we're living in right now, everything is at limited capacity. They had sold out really quickly. I was bummed out about that, but then we ended up finding, um, getting a good tip from a friend 
to go um, try out Ron del Barrerito, which I'm wearing their shirt, and it's super comfortable. I love it. Um, the tour was awesome, and I'm even more ecstatic that we went to Ron del Barrerito because it's the original uh, rum distillery in Puerto Rico. So that was really awesome because we ended up finding that Bacardi was not originally from Puerto Rico. It came from Cuba. I was mind blown. I, I couldn't believe it. So it was really awesome. So make sure to book your tours in advance if you can. Um, that's a definitely must, especially in today's world. The last one I have on my list is Ubers and taxis. So Uber and taxis um, situation here, we didn't have a lot of issues with it, but we ended up finding that some costs were a little bit more than the other. And uh, the nice thing was the guys downstairs at the valet area at the Fairmont Hills San Juan were so helpful. They were always checking on us to make sure, hey, where are you going? And they'll tell you whether you should do a taxi or whether you should do an Uber because they would be able to tell you which one was gonna be cheaper. So that was really cool. So make sure to check with them. And we didn't have a problem checking in with them instead of like just booking it as we're walking out of our hotel room to make sure by the time we get downstairs, our Uber driver is down there. We would talk to the guy and see what they suggested and um, we go from there. So keep that in mind. The one thing that I thought was a little strange was that Uber drivers, there's not quite enough of them it seems like in Puerto Rico. Uh, for example, we were at Ocean Lab Brewery on our last day right before we had to take off and decided to grab a beer. And Ocean Lab Brewery is literally like right behind the airport. And I mean, it's, it's not even, maybe if that a five minute drive. And I sat on the Uber app trying to get an Uber and no one was either picking up or it connected with one and then it dropped. So I don't know if it was the driver that decided to, you know, cancel us or it was just that maybe it was an error. I have no idea. But point is, is that we ended up having to call a taxi like 20 minutes later because we just could not get an Uber driver at Ocean Lab Brewery. So luckily the concierge there at Ocean Lab Brewery were really kind enough to help us out get a taxi and get us to the airport so all right and with that that is all i have for you guys i hope you guys really enjoyed our puerto rico video i really wanted to just make sure and give you guys some additional tips comments of what our experience was and i hope this really helped you guys make your travel arrangements for the near or far future for puerto rico or anywhere about you're you're planning on going make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and comment down below what did you guys love about puerto rico what do you guys suggest where we should go next let us know like and subscribe here on sister sister tv and we'll catch you on the flip side